see you. You'll be all right. Hi, How's things? Hi. Okay. Lovely to see you. Thank you too. Come on in. Oh. So, we're just on this theme, then, of Team Rickshaw, and, Tom, you know what it's all about. At a young age, you know, putting the hours in and, and getting a result. I mean, they've done incredibly well to raise so much money for such a great cause, but, yeah, I know only too well how yeah. much effort it takes to, you know, get up in the morning, mm. do all the training that you need to, you know, get a great end result, and that's what these guys have done. Mm, you're a perfect guest for them tonight. It's a treat. <laughs> and we have to say, since we saw you last, congratulations Thank on you your very engagement. Much. Thank you very much. And we've got a brilliant picture of you and Lance and Donald <laughs> Sutherland, the actor. I know. Photo bombing yeah. you. I know. I couldn't believe it. Went to the Hunger Games premiere and we were having a photo, and then literally it wasn't until we looked on the photo afterwards. <laughs> we got President Snow is in the background. Absolutely Bad brilliant. Picture. Well, uh, coming up, we'll be giving Team Rickshaw front row seats for a special performance from Jess Glynn. Uh, we can speak to Jess. She's outside. Jess, amazing Hello. night. Hello. Hiya. Amazing <laughs> night on Friday. It was an amazing night. What was the highlight for you then? Because there was so much going on, wasn't there, there backstage? There was so much. I guess the performance was amazing, but I think one of my highlights was going to the Queen Vic. <laughs> oh, yes, good. <laughs> Us too. It's, it's yeah. surreal, actually, isn't it? It's so it? surreal. It's a lot smaller than I thought, mm. but, you know, it was so special going in there and meeting Alfie. <laughs> I think I actually saw Jess uh, passing C-3PO and R2-D2 in the corridor as well, which was quite a bizarre oh. moment. But anyway, uh, later <laughs> I don't on, Jess... I remember that bit. You don't? <laughs> All right, I think you were too busy focused on uh, the fact yeah. you were about to sing, as you will be later on in tonight's programme, because exactly. Jess will be singing Take Me Home, the official Children in Need single at the end of tonight's programme. Well, Tom, as a junior world champion, I mean, it's certainly not a holiday you were taking time off for, but you know what it's like to take time out of school. Uh, yeah. Would you say that your education suffered from, for, you know, from your sport? I don't think my education suffered from sport at all. I mean, whenever we went away, we would always have to do, like, Skype calls with teachers or yeah. take a tutor away with us. But, I mean, sport teaches you so many different life lessons, whether it's time management, discipline, um, setting goals, all those things. So I don't think, actually... I would have been as good in school unless I had sport to kind of teach me those Can I ask lessons. what you got for grades? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, GCSE, I got five A stars, two A's, and A level. Did you? Did all right. A stars, did two all right. A's. <laughs> that so, is impressive. Yeah. yeah, it is. A lot. Hard. I'm just competitive, so yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of you know, in anything that I do, I try and <laughs> win. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a record year for Children in Need. Um, thanks yes. in part, of course, to our lovely team Rickshaw, but also you played a part because you're part of the writing team uh, of this children's book called The Curious Tale of Fee Rex. And it's been written by all these people on the list here, and I'll just name some so we know um, Rod Stewart, Andy Murray, Keith Lemon, you, Tom Daly, Sir Paul McCartney. So, how did this come about then? I mean, it's such a sweet little book, and if any of you get the chance, you know, it would be amazing if you could go online and buy it and, you know, help children in need. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, I like to do anything that I can in my position to help anyone and for many different causes, children in need being one of them, but also, you know, I do stuff for my, the brain tumour charity um, because my dad suffered from a brain tumour. Um, also doing stuff with the CN Buddy Network mm. because... I've had a history of bullying and want to do things that I can yeah. help people. So as soon as this opportunity came up, I was like, yep, yeah. I do what I can. Uh, curious is in the title and curious is in the way that it was created because you had no idea who had written what before you. No, you had no idea who was writing what before. You kind of just had to, you know, make up. So long. what, you had one line, did you? Yeah, and you had to, the you previous had... person's text and then you just had to do a page. Yeah, you kind of had a, like, a little bit of a, an outline of what was going on, but you... But, yeah, you could take it in whatever direction you wanted, which was fun. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, the, I mean, the drawings are pretty fun, too. No, it's a lovely book, it is. Well, Tom, you mentioned the anti-bullying campaign, yes. which you're doing with the Cartoon Network. Now, this is something that is very close to your heart. What, what, what's happening? Yeah, well, um, we're launching the CN Buddy Network, and uh, for me, I was, you know, I suffered from bullying when I was younger, going through school. Mm -hmm. It was a tough time for me, and you feel alone, and you feel like you can't talk to anyone. So... Really, it's about now I've come out the other side of it, I feel like I want to do anything I can to help other people in the same situation. And knowing that it's not OK and you're not alone, you're not the only person that's, you know, being bullied. Mm -hmm. And to be able to find a buddy, to be able to trust and be able to tell because they can help you. Mm. And being the Cartoon Network, they've obviously come up with some fantastic animations to really help get the message across. Have a look. Don't suffer in silence. Tell a friend, teacher, or trusted adult what's going on, and together we can stop bullying. Be a bully, not a bully. And 
it is a very interesting take, isn't it, Tom? Because it's not just aimed at those that have been bullied, but also the bully themselves. Yeah, I mean, it, the website gives you information for, you know, bullies, if you're being bullied, the observer, mm. like, just to try and help, you know, try and get kids to stand up against bullying because, I mean, it's not right, especially now with, you know, cyberbullying because, mm. it's, you know, it's evolved massively. Now, it's, not, yeah, it's not just, say, like, 15 years ago where it was just, you know... It's face to face stuff. Face to face now stuff. It's, now yeah. it's people hiding behind computers, mm. phones, and people thinking that it's actually, oh, it's not going to harm sending this message or posting this photo. But actually, it really does, you know, affect people and thinking about what you do before you actually post anything. Mm. Uh, you can find everything you need to know about the Be a Buddy campaign on the Cartoon Network's website. Cheers, Marty. And John's here with us now. Um, last time we were on, John, a couple of weeks ago, you were telling us all about this BBC Weather Watchers. So if anybody missed that, mm. just remind us of what this new initiative is. OK, well, it's coming to its own this week because of the wild weather. bbc.co.uk slash weatherwatchers. It's so easy to get online and off you go. You just register and then you can take observations from where you live. So if you look out the window, if it's sunny, you just put sunny, the sunny symbol there, or you can put cloudy or rainy or whatever. You can go into a bit more detail. You can take a temperature reading, for example. And then, of course, the icing on the cake is the photographs. And boy, we've mm. had some photographs coming over the last week because the weather has been so Horrendous. Impactful. Yeah, horrendous. But actually, it's quite helpful to us as forecasters because although we have really fancy computer models, it's the evidence on the ground which makes all the difference to people's mm. lives. Weather is all about impacts. So we can actually see some of the impacts which have been coming in uh, via our Weather Watchers photographs. So these the are last... Weather Watchers from the last 24 hours? Just in the last first, 24 hours uh, from, uh, from Cumbria. This one, beautiful but also dangerous there. Nuthatch in Cumbria. Sunny skies, we can see the extent of the flooding uh, across the riverside there. And then for Tanya, while well, in Cumbria, it was uh, hazardous driving, shall we say, for this particular vehicle. Yeah. And Trevor brought in a photograph from Cockermouth. And of course, Cockermouth had such horrendous flooding back in 2009. Hasn't mm -hmm. been as bad this time around. Uh, so far, there's more rain in the forecast, I have to say. If we think back to last week, we had Storm Abigail. This was the first named storm from the Met Office. And this was the sort of impact it had on the coastline. This one taken from uh, Tedrick in uh, Ayrshire. And also Tom took a, a lovely photograph from uh, Argyll and Butte, the waves crashing onto the shoreline there. Not many trees across the north and west mm. of Scotland, but we're expecting another storm, the second named storm, Barney, to hit parts of England and Wales tomorrow evening. Now, because it's further south, there are a lot more trees around, yeah. mm. and yeah. with gusts of 60, 70 miles an hour, potentially, I'm expecting some significant impacts, and it's those impacts which are all important to weather watchers and sure, to us yeah. as forecasters. Yeah. So and when you say impacts, you mean trees coming down? Potentially, Alex, yes, with those sort of gusts, inland trees coming down, because some of them are still in full leaf, the ground is saturated. If it's so soggy, they're not so well anchored. And wave around a bit, uh, possibly so, power yeah. lines down, certainly travel disruption, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And a quick footnote, to, at the end of the week, it turns a lot colder, so weather watchers, snow, possibly, get those pictures oh, yeah. in. It'd be a shock to the system at the end of the week, for get sure. Get the snow boots on if you're going out with your camera. <laughs> Thank Space you, John. Lovely. Now, in a moment, we'll find out just how much Team Rickshaw have raised since the total was announced during Children in Need on Friday. Hint, it's gone up just a little bit more. It has, it has. But first, before we find out that new total, let's remind ourselves, shall we, of that 477-mile journey from Land's End to the East End. <laughs> Let's say goodbye to Land's End, shall we? Yeah! And let's go! What was it about this year's Rickshaw Challenge that made it our most successful yet? It wasn't the weather. Land's End was desolate and damp. How are your legs? I am aching. <laughs> I did it! Well done! The scenery helped. The West Country is Britain at its best. But it wasn't that. I saw six young people who'd hardly met before put their personal challenges behind them to achieve something they will remember all of their lives. My family have helped me to accept my disability. I wouldn't change my life for the world. And I'm sure that you brighten every day for them. Yeah. Hey! Hello! No! Well done! Oh my God! Oh my God! 
Did you think that your granddaughter would be such a big hit within Team Rickshaw? Yes. <laughs> a bit trickier. The things are slipping. Whoa. George D's father died in a cycling road accident. Just being here was brave. It seems to me that you've got a, an enormous amount of inner strength and that when you get on the rickshaw, you can sort of focus. You focus on why you're doing it and you look back at what you've done, you know, you know that your dad will be proud of that. This year's riders displayed an admirable amount of teamwork. Some were stronger than others, but all pulled together when the emotional road was hardest. What do you make of the rest of Team Rickshaw? I love them. It's really like a family already. Everyone's just been talking openly about why they're here. You all have this common thread of being incredibly determined. Are we ready, team? Yeah! <laughs> Some started low in confidence, but grew in front of our eyes. None more so than George G. It's great. I mean, I, I, I love being part of this. All of my gang, all my teachers and friends, they are so proud of me. You've proved to yourself that you can do stuff. Yeah, I really can. In life. I am strong and I nailed it. So why has this year been such a spectacular success? It has to be because so many of you came out to encourage them. To give your support and your money as never before. Because you let these six young champions into your hearts. Thank you. All of you. To donate five pound, text TEAM to 70705. If you feel more generous, give ten pounds. Please text team again to seven o seven ten. And those texts, they'll cost your donation plus your standard network message charge, and all of your donation will go to children in need. You must be sixteen or over, so please do ask the bill pays permission before you call. And for full terms and conditions, just go to the website bbc.co.uk/pudsey. Well, there was a lovely moment, wasn't there, when Erin, where are you, Erin? There you are. Um, sort of predicted in Bristol that the total would be £50,000. And it was yeah, just she a touch more. She <laughs> Hoping, was fingers crossed. And it was a lot more than that come Friday, wasn't it? It was oh, a fantastic moment. Just yes. remind us of that total. Well, thing. yes, so on, uh, on Friday's Children in Need Night, uh, we revealed an incredible talk. We couldn't believe it, could we, when we turned around and we saw their £3,468,000. It was phenomenal, it was isn't remarkable. it? It was remarkable. However... However, since then, the total has gone up even further to... Well, it now stands at a remarkable three million seven hundred and forty-five thousand four hundred and eleven pounds. Thank you for that. It's nearly a four million. It's nearly a four million. And you know what? It's, it's unbelievable, but it's so uplifting as well to hear that. £277,000 came in over the weekend, yes, despite the very, very sad news in Paris. Yes, yeah, so we do have to say a very heartfelt mm. thank you so much to everybody that's donated. We're going to leave the numbers up for a little bit longer so that you can, if you wish, add a little bit more to that.